Hello, it's me, Brooke Cormier, professional artist who likes to paint and create things. <laughs> Excuse my voice. May sound a little bit weird. I'm a little under the weather right now. <coughs> Compensating with a full face of makeup today. Hey, whatever makes you feel better, right? So today I thought I would talk about this series that I started at the end of last year. It's a series that I'm really in love with so far, so I thought I'd just share a bit of the background and a bit of the process with you. Something about me, one of my favorite hobbies is mushroom photography and foraging. I've always had a fascination with fungi. Growing up, I would spend almost all of my summers at our family cottage near Halliburton, Ontario, and my sister and our friends and I would just run around the beach in the forest all day. One of our favorite games to play, especially in the fall during mushroom season, was to pretend that we were rival shopkeepers and basically go out in the forest and collect as many exciting and cool mushrooms as we could and then sell them to each other using our currency, which was the turkey tail mushroom. <laughs> we would spend all day scavenging the forest for mushrooms and then put them on display in our shops for sale <laughs> to each other, even though we were rivals. We would pretend that the puffball mushrooms, you know, the ones that you squeeze them and the spores just puff out, we would pretend that that was like luxury perfume and basically like spray it into our faces. Honestly, I don't even know how we're all still alive to this day. Anyway, so I grew up with this fascination with mushrooms and just the thrill of the hunt. This in later years, once I got myself a decent camera, turned into a love for mushroom photography and then once my mom gifted me a mushroom identification guide one year that turned into a love for mushroom foraging. So every spring now my family likes to go out and forage for morels and then later on in the season we look for bull eats and chicken of the woods and oyster mushrooms and chanterelles and all that good stuff. And lucky for me, my sister-in-law is an amazing chef so she creates these like decadent meals with all the foraged mushrooms that we find which is just I also just love learning about the fungal world because it's just so interesting and so integral to, like, life. <laughs> Let me just read you this little snippet from the back of Merlin Sheldrake's Entangled Life. These endlessly surprising organisms have no brain but can solve problems and manipulate animal behavior with devastating precision. And giving us bread, alcohol, and life-saving medicines, fungi have shaped human history and their psychedelic properties have recently been shown to alleviate a number of mental illnesses. Their ability to digest plastic, explosives, pesticides, and crude oil is being harnessed in breakthrough technologies. And the discovery that they connect plants in underground networks, the wood wide web, <laughs> clever is transforming the way we understand ecosystems. Yet over 90% of their species remain undocumented. Crazy. Okay, so now that you understand the inspiration behind this series, on to the art making. So I've been practicing mushroom photography for years now and I've accumulated so many photos that I just didn't really know what to do with. I knew that I wanted to transform these photos into paintings one day, but I just didn't really have a vision of how I wanted the whole thing to come to life, so to speak. <laughs> I didn't really want to just paint the photos that I took in my typical realm of realism because I was thinking, you know, for this series I want it to be something that I would really want to hang in my own house and I was just picturing like this giant realistic picture or painting of a mushroom above my couch and it just... I don't know, wasn't sparking joy. <laughs> so after almost years of revisiting this idea again and again, last year I thought it would be cool to add like an abstract component where I would basically have these realistic mushrooms kind of like growing out of an abstract 
This way I could really experiment with a different style while also combining my typical realistic style and incorporating my mushroom photography. In this series, I drew a lot of inspiration from fellow Canadian artist Jana Watson. Like I mentioned before, I wanted this series to be something I would like to hang in my own house and her work is just so amazing. I wish I could hang all of her paintings in my house. After completing the first five paintings in the series, I took a step back and kind of felt like the paintings resembled her work a little bit too much, you know, other than like the whole mushroom. <laughs> component. So that's something I'm definitely going to keep in mind moving forward with the series. I really just want to make sure that I'm giving her signature style the space that it deserves and at this point I'm really just experimenting and just trying to develop my own kind of techniques and you know I'm really just dipping my foot in the whole abstract world right now and I'm really enjoying it but I've got a long ways to go and hopefully one day I will come up with something groundbreaking. Now, a bit about the process of how I worked through these paintings. Let me start with the materials that I used. All the pieces are painted on wood panels. I didn't want to be restricted by size, but I also wanted to keep the aspect ratio consistent throughout the whole series in case I wanted to make prints in the future or a calendar perhaps. I sanded all the panels down so they were nice and smooth and then I primed them with a couple layers of clear gesso. I painted all the background colors in acrylic because I wanted them to dry quickly so that I could move on to the next layer right away. And then all the layers after that, except for this one, were painted in oil. So the process of starting these paintings all begins with finding a color scheme that I like. For this, I consult my dear friend Pinterest. Honestly, I never used to use Pinterest and in the past six months or so, I've just taken such a deep dive and I love it. Pinterest just knows what I like now. So I find a color scheme that I like, usually consisting between three to five colors. From there, I consult my album of mushroom photography that I have collected over the years, and I try and find a mushroom that I think would complement this color scheme. From there, I use the rule of thirds to loosely plan my composition. If you don't know what this is, it's basically a composition kind of guideline where your image, or in this case panel, is split into nine equal parts and the important compositional elements fall either on the intersections of those lines or on the lines themselves. For this series, I was keeping in mind what all the paintings would look like as a cohesive body of work. So when I was planning the compositions, I wanted the important compositional elements, AKA the mushrooms, to kind of fall at different places in each painting. Just because I thought it would be more interesting this way instead of having all of them kind of like smack dab in the middle. So after all that planning, I then paint the background in acrylic paint like I mentioned before, and then start painting the abstract. What I love about Jana Watson's work in particular is her use of negative space. So when creating these paintings, I knew I wanted to have the brush strokes kind of like suspended in midair almost in the center of the painting. I feel like this really draws the eye in and makes sure there isn't too much noise happening around. However, for some of the paintings, I actually did let the wood grain of the panel kind of shine through the paint, which I found to be kind of an interesting look. I did this by really diluting the acrylic paint with water and then painting on a layer, letting it dry, painting on another layer, letting it dry until I got the desired shade. tried to find a way of creating more engaging brush strokes with kind of a 3D effect and while painting all the abstracts I'm consistently keeping in mind where the 
mushroom will fit in so it can kind of be added seamlessly. And once the abstract is complete, I then paint in the realistic mushroom. I think my favorite one to paint was the false chanterelle with the little uh, leopard frog on top just because it was so darn cute. <laughs> and I also loved painting the Amanita with the little baby slug on it because I thought that was cute too and the colors were really fun and vibrant. This project has given me a lot of joy and also pushed me creatively, you know, to like think outside the box and Instead of just copying a picture, I have to really keep in mind like color and composition and values and, and all that important stuff. There was just so much improvising and problem solving involved that it really made the whole process really exciting. I'm really looking forward to continuing this series. I haven't decided exactly how many I'm going to make. I have so many photos to choose from, but I think that I'm going to cap the series maybe at like 10 or 12. Well, it's getting quite dark out, so I should probably wrap things up now. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something. It was really fun for me actually to share my creative process with you guys and just talk about mushrooms, you know? It's not something I get to do all the time, so thank you for giving me that opportunity. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. <laughs> Please subscribe to my channel if you like the video and uh, yeah, your support of my YouTube endeavor is very much appreciated. By supporting this channel, AKA subscribing, watching my videos, liking my videos, commenting, recommending them to your pals, maybe one day I can be paid for this too and then I can make even more of them. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're having a great day. I'm Brooke Cormier and I'll see you next time.